Property Graduate is the show for aspiring property developers and investors to win a life-changing opportunity that money can't buy. The prize is twofold, forming a property company with renowned property guru John Howard and owning 50% of the shares. John is one of the most experienced property developers and investors in the UK today. With almost four decades experience in the industry, he's been there and done that, having purchased and sold around 4,000 homes, apartments and developments. This savvy businessman is putting £1 million of his own money into the new company so the winner can buy and develop a property. With a 50% stake in it, they'll automatically receive a 50% share of the profit and potentially have John as a business partner for life. You're watching Property Graduate. Last time on Property Graduate, we saw 20 confident competitors vying to impress John and his two associates, Helen and Fiona, in the first round called The Interviews. At the end of the day, the panel picked the 10 best men and women who they felt had a chance to become John's new property business partner. The lucky 10 were Vanessa, Alfred, Alicia, Luigi, Kimberly, Tej, David, James, Eleanor and Aaron. They've now been invited back to the second round of the competition called The Challenge. So let's go over to our panel and find out what's in store for our contestants in this round of the competition. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Challenge. Big day today, I hope you're on your A game because you're gonna to need to be, you're all looking very sharp, sharp suits and everything, Look, ladies look lovely, fantastic. So, in the pack, you'll have a development appraisal. It's a very simple appraisal. It needs to be filled out simply. If you want to, if you want to increase it, you can do. If you want to put more things in, if you think I've missed something out of the appraisals, they're blank, obviously, because you're, you're the one filling it all out. So if you want to add to them, please add to them. It's simple, and the reason it's simple for a reason, because you've got to sort these deals out quickly. When you send me a deal, if, if you're my partner, we can't be waiting half a day for you to tell me whether you and I think it's a deal worth going for. It needs to be done very, very quickly because you can have a whole load of them to do. The deal that you've all been given, individual deals, are deals that have been in an auction and that I was interested in. So they are deals that I like and you will get to know the sort of deals I like to do, which I think is very important. They have a guide price on them. That guide price might be correct, it might not be correct. We are looking to make a 30% net profit after all costs. Bear that in mind. It may be that you find that it's not worth anything like the guide price, which is fine, absolutely fine. Some of the best deals are deals you don't do, but you still need to put in the price you would pay for it to make at least a 30% net profit. And if you come up with a better idea than me, because I've already appraised them, and Fiona and Helen have got my appraisal, so I'm under pressure today as well. If yours are better than mine, that's great, because oh, I want to surround myself with the best people I can find. That's what I've done in my 40 year career so far, is surround myself with better people than me. So, I can do these appraisals in 15 minutes. I'm giving you 60 minutes to do the appraisals from now, good luck. So there you have it, and it really is a challenge. Each of the contestants has been provided with a property deal to appraise. The task, to create a plan that will produce a net profit of 30% after all costs and interests have been taken into account. And they have just one hour to do it. When time's up, they'll face Helen and Fiona, who will go through their appraisals with a fine tooth comb and ask them, arguably, one of the most important questions how much they would actually pay for the property. All right then, Dave, how's it going? Yeah, not so bad, thanks, yeah. Yeah, hard at it. <laughs> and where is your property based? My property is based in um, Wickham in Buckinghamshire. Are you familiar with the area itself anyway? I'm not, to be honest with you, no. I know you're hard at it. Um, do you think you can make the figures work? Oh uh, yeah, I'll make the figures work, yeah, of course. You're confident? Well, I've got to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, good luck. Thanks. 
Tej, can't miss uh, you. And your yellow top again. <laughs> Didn't disappoint. So how's it going? It's good. You know, this is an interesting property. It's not something I'd usually look at, so it is definitely challenging. What have you got? I have a freehold former Coast Guard building in Walton on the Naze. Do you even know the area? Um, no, but I know it's near where John lives. Okay, so I know right. He's a favourite for himself. Uh, do you think you can make the figures work? Yes, definitely. There's going to be some some questions kind of in the middle that I'm going to have for myself and I'm going to work through, especially around the construction costs, um, because there's so much you could do with this building. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And what do you think you'd like to do with it? I think the, the sort of most straightforward thing, especially with planning, would be to put flats in it, if possible, to make a little bungalow with the annex. But flats is probably going to be the, the easiest and most uh, profitable thing to do here. You're feeling confident? Always. Is it a good task? It's a tough one, actually, I have to say. Um, more so, uh, it's a commercial unit that's in between two units. And um, <clears throat> just looking at what the potential is, whether mm. to convert that all to residential or maybe add an extension. Hi, Aaron. Okay. okay how's it going? Um, a little bit stressful. I'm just looking at the time, but yeah, fine. It's good. What have you got then? Um, so it's a, it's a care home. Um, not looked at care homes previously. Um, so there's a potential to add uh, another site as well. Mm. So it's the same, build another 12 units. Now, you can also do into flats. That's kind of what I refer to, like office and mm. straight into permitted development. So I'm not really sure. So at the minute, I'm thinking, keep the existing building as it is, work out the cost to build a new, new one on the side, work out how much that generates in terms of an income, times that by a multiplier, in terms of what the bank will give us, and then work backwards and then think that's what we're going to offer. Are you good at the numbers? Because that sounds very complicated to yeah, me. <laughs> so I, I literally had to strip it down. I was trying to think too creatively first and trying to do too much. And I'm just thinking, keep it really simple, but hopefully get these numbers right. Mm. So fingers crossed. It's all about the numbers, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah. yeah and absolutely. the profit. Absolutely. So I just need to work on that now. So fingers crossed. Mm. We'll get there. Tense, is tense? Yeah. <laughs> it definitely is tense. Okay, good luck. Thanks for your time. Vanessa. Hello. How is it going? Is this a tough call? It's, um, it's going okay. I mean, it's in some respects, because it's already got planning, mm. it's a, uh, okay, well, I need to price it up and see if it works based on the planning they've got. But actually, what I'm trying to get to is, can I be more creative than that? Can I think differently and not just follow the prescribed plans that they've already got? And will so, the figures allow? Exactly, exactly. Um, so yes, it's trying to know what I'd offer based on what they've actually got versus what I would offer if I was doing it slightly differently, but there's no floor plan and I rely on a floor plan. Okay. So I'm having to, I've tried to look up the planning application and I'm trying to get through to the documents, but um, yeah, it's it's tough. It's the time pressure. I'm used to doing very detailed. I like to, so I'm on the phone with an agent saying, okay, tell me about this local area. What do one bed to two beds go for? What if they're high end? And I would usually take a bit more time about that. So it's the time yeah. pressure that is the, the crunch here. But, um, but yeah. Are you good at the maths? Is that your strong point? I'm not good at mental maths, but in general, relatively comfortable with figures. So yeah, arithmetic is not my thing, but um, yes, in general, a feel for numbers is, is fine, but I am very much relying on Excel. <laughs> Luigi, now I understand there's a bit of a problem today. You've had throat surgery, so you can't really talk, um, but are you feeling confident? Oh, okay, good. All right, well, I will wish you luck, and I'm so sorry about your voice, and I hope it returns soon. Um, but good to know that you're feeling confident, and you're, you, you think you're okay with the figures and the calculations. Yeah. Nice one. Okay, best of luck. Alicia, you're busy tapping away there. Are you on your calculator? Uh, no, I'm actually <laughs> looking at right move at the moment, just for some comparables. But yeah. How's it going? Um, really well. It's interesting, actually. Uh, I've, to be honest, I've not even got into the numbers yet. I'm just doing some background okay. digging on the property and, and obviously some of the planning applications that have gone in. So what property have you got? So this is, um, it's actually St Albans Hall. So it's a, an, it's an a building of interest in the area. Um, so it's in a conservation area. Obviously there's a few challenges with the planning. Planning has been refused on this to convert to a care home. Um, but actually looking into the detail of it, it seems it's purely because they're going to demolish the Victorian range, which is of interest. So I think if you could retain that, potentially a conversion to residential would be favourable because it actually says that in the scope at the bottom in the uh, officer's comments. So okay. it looks like it could work. It's just now we're getting, jumping into the numbers now. I, are you good with the numbers? I'd say good. I mean, I don't know the area. I'm just going to mm. go off what I can find mm. online and just go from there. 
Are you confident today? Um, I would say, yeah, I feel comfortable that this is something that I can tackle. I mean, it's bigger than anything I've ever done in practicality, but mm. on paper, yeah, it looks suitable. And I think obviously with someone like John's help, who's you know, done billions of these deals before, it makes sense to have that, that support behind you to jump into something like this, but I couldn't do it on my own. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> but you reckon you can uh, certainly crack this project that you've uh, been given to do and, and show, show them what you're worth? To me, I'd love to say, yeah, but I mean, obviously, when you go to planning and things like that, that's the, that's the real test, isn't it? But you can show the panel today, you reckon, that you so. are absolutely. a good, strong candidate? I would hope so. Yeah, absolutely. I've got the right, you know, the right things in place now, so we just need to get those numbers crunched and we'll see where we get to. I'll let you get on. Thank You're very you. busy. Thanks, so. <laughs> Bye. Alfie, it's a big day. Yes. How are you getting on? Doing okay. Deal isn't what I would be used to. So what, that's, what is it? It's um, ex for existing flats, which just need a bit of uh, modernisation. And that's not really where my expertise is. That's just kind of doing a new kitchen, new bathroom, a bit of a lick of paint, really. <laughs> um, and that's just not really where, where I'm set up. But it's a challenge, so I'll give it a go. It's about the numbers as well, though, isn't it? I mean, this is about creating something really good that you could then get a profit from. Do you reckon you can make the numbers work? Yep, definitely. Yeah, I was I was well practiced, but uh, some of John's um, just like assumptions he makes aren't necessarily what I would I would say. So that just complicate things a little bit. But uh, I think I'm there now. I think I've got the number we need to pay. I mean, you are the youngest candidate here. Um, does, is that weighing on your mind, or are you just going to go for it? It just depends what John's looking for, really. We, I don't know what he wants, and uh, maybe neither does he, but it'll be interesting to see, see how it goes. All right, well, good luck. Let's hope you can give him four really good flats that will turn a profit. <laughs> All right. Thank you. James, how are you getting on? OK, thanks. He's, uh, John's thrown me a little bit of a curveball. He's, uh, he's given me a project that uh, the average sales cost of the local area is £232 a square metre. Right, OK. For the kind of houses that we're building, which are fairly high spec, um, but cutting edge eco houses, mm. with, which are built to passive house standards, net zero energy, net zero carbon. Um, we build at about £185 a square foot. Right, OK. So there's not enough margin. By the time you've done the um, uh, common areas, you've done all the roadways and infrastructure. So I'm having to go with a slightly different approach, which is a custom build model. Can you bring any of your eco expertise and interest into this task? Absolutely. Task? Um, and also, I've gone with a slightly different model here, which John said he didn't like last time. So um, I'm, I'm kind of risking it all here. But it will make the project work and means you can make 30% return um, and still offer a decent amount for the asking price. Because it's all about the profit and it's all about that return, exactly. isn't it? And it also manages your uh, risk with, with less finance uh, needed. So you reckon you can do it then? You sound positive. Uh, I think so. Um, I mean, I know this model works. It's just whether or not I can convince um, Fiona, Helen and John. Kimberly, your time's up. Yeah, that's fine. How's it I gone? Only, I was only here. Uh, How's it gone? Going round. I mean, hard. there's a lot to do in the time. Um, you know, I'm quite a detailed person, so it's been a good challenge actually in practice for this to do really high level. Um, so it's been really, really good. Stripped back the analysis. And it was good actually, it was a good one for me. Um, just hope I've not messed up on the numbers. Um, well, the numbers are the key, aren't they? Yeah, and I'm yeah. an accountant, so I could totally embarrass myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a good, good little project actually. I'd quite like to buy it. <laughs> and what is the project? Um, so it's, it's in Cardiff City Centre. It's um, the first two, so five floors um, only, not the ground floor. Um, and it's, yeah, there's some of the floors are commercial um, offices at the moment, and um, but could be converted to residential in the future. Some we can do now, some we can do later. Um, so a nice mix of commercial um, and leasehold and that kind of thing, which actually my background, so yeah, that Sounds I like that. confident. Well, who knows if I've got the wrong end of the stick. And it was in um, in Wales and there's no permitted development there. So um, to the best of my understanding, I've not looked too much at Wales. I've been focusing on the easier, quicker wins in England at the moment with the new permitted development. So it was a bit of a curveball for me. Um, and I, I don't know Cardiff that well um, as a commercial um, opportunity, but I know it because I like, I like uh, Cardiff and so it's obviously I. a good city. So <laughs> good city. You know, there may be a, you know, a better outlet for this, you know, around the service accommodation route or HMOs or that kind of thing, but I haven't had time to look at it in the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I hope your skill as an accountant really stands you in good stead today. You're going to be tested. 
I know. But I'm sure you can do it. So hot on the numbers. <laughs> I may have made a major mistake, but nonetheless. Well, you won't be forgettable because you're in a striking yellow dress. Yes, so. exactly, yeah. So it's got to go Fair well. in the yellow dress. All right, Not good luck. bikini. <laughs> no, well, that would be a different yellow show. Yellow bikini. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Good luck. The hour is up and the competitors are locking in their numbers and handing them to Helen and Fiona to review. Join us after the break when David is grilled on his appraisal. With 37 years of experience as a project manager in the construction industry, David was given a vacant freehold site with planning for 14 flats in High Wycombe in Buckinghamshire. The property was listed for auction with a guide price of just over a million pounds. So, do you want to take us through uh, the deal that you were given to analyse and how you approached it, what your conclusions were? It was an auction property. It was up for 1.05 million and had planning permission for 14 one bedroom flats on it. Personally, what I've done now, I, I've tried to calculate things on the basis of building 14 one bedroom flats, but in reality, I wouldn't have done that. Um, there's not enough money in it. If I was to purchase this, I would have resubmitted planning. Mm -hmm. I would have built less units. I would have built a mix of two and one bedroom flats to appeal to different range of buyers. Also, with less units, you've got a shorter project. So you've got less finance fees. You, uh, the build costs are still gonna be the same whether you're building one, two, three bedroom flats, but you've got the, the building team on site for less time. Every, every day that they your project's at risk, your capital's at risk. So it'd be a shorter project, shorter finance um, charges, and I believe it'd probably be easier to sell. And what was the difference in the trickle down to the net profit on changing that from the 14 the, the, to the smaller units? Depending on how many less you, you, you would have built, you would have had less, uh, sorry, you would have had a smaller GDV but there or thereabouts, the same net profit, you have had less expenditure, less cost, less GDV, and the same level of profit. I'm um, not gonna waste your time. I've got the figures wrong on this, um, and I'm not gonna pretend I've got them right. Did you run sort of both sets of numbers, you know? I, I, I didn't, and you know, I, I'm gonna be dead honest there. Um, I'm old school, right? If you're looking for someone who can whiz through some uh, thing on a laptop in 15 minutes and come up with numbers, it ain't me, right? I'm pen and paper man with a calculator. And to do this properly yeah, would take calculate. me half a day. Yeah, it, <laughs> no bad fun. And the, the, it just, if that's what you want, it ain't me. This, but did this, you do it with a pen and paper? I, I always do it with pen and paper, always. And I don't care what anyone thinks, because then I can see it in front. With a spreadsheet, with a formula in, things change and all that. And I was going through that, but, oh, I don't know what was happening. And in the end, I was out of time, right? And I was just trying to fill this thing in. And that's the truth. It's a tight time frame, though. We, yeah. we absolutely, we appreciate that. You know, he was very honest. I think he'd struggled a little bit with kind of the time frame, and he's obviously much more detail. I would have liked to have seen where he said that the two options would have had the same net profit, but I would have liked to see some kind of calculation. Yeah. It's fine if it's old school pen and paper, but where's the pen and paper? I didn't see pen and paper. Yeah. Next up is Eleanor, who wants to inspire other women to become property developers like herself. Eleanor was given a vacant freehold mid-terrace three-storey building in London that was placed at auction with a guide price of up to one and a half million pounds. Oh, welcome back, Eleanor. Thank you. Uh, you have a um, nice little project in central London. That's my hood, so it'll be really interesting to understand what you made of this. Talk us through your numbers and what you do with this property. Uh, it's a commercial um, building. Uh -huh. Already has one flat above. Um, and it's not, I would say, probably not a massive um, building. So in terms of looking, firstly, I looked at what was the potential 
for the property. I looked at whether it was possible to extend on the first floor. The neighbouring shop had already done that. Yeah. But if you looked at the site for the neighbour, there were windows there, so you wouldn't be able to extend out on the first floor. And how did you find that out? Through Google. So I looked at Google Maps and Google Earth, and I could see clearly there were windows mm. there. I also looked at the property um, on auction, and it was withdrawn from auction. Um, and they had a floor plan there, so I could see the floor plate and the size of the floor plate. Mm -hmm. Um, and then looking at, um, you know, if there was any planning permission for neighbouring sites to see if they could have converted that to residential, um, but that hadn't been done. Um, there were two flats that were the neighbouring site had um, had approved for the upper floors um, on the um, on the left hand side. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of that potential, I looked at potentially doing a class M at the back of the shop um, but you wouldn't the floor plate was too small so maybe you'd need to do that as a duplex with the first floor right. so just to keep within the minimum space standard yeah and then potentially for the second floor to go, then go up in the loft and do maybe another duplex so it'd end up with one bedroom flat and a studio and a, a smaller shop front which would be 23 square meters which um, related to the um, rateable value. So if you looked at the rateable value for that commercial unit, mm. it was only 23 square metres. That's quite small though, so what it kind is, of but tenant would you envision? So that would be more of a mom and pop, just a sort of start-up business um, potentially. Would they have a toilet for, in that 23 square metres? Yes, I mean you'd create create one. But I mean if you looked at the rateable value um, mm. in that um, for that particular unit, that's just maximising the the price for that sort of square meterage but I assessed that but that wasn't the plan that I picked because okay. the reason for that is that the GDV was 1.4 million okay which was what the the guide price was 1.4 to 1.6 yeah and I just couldn't make the numbers work yeah so for me that would be a no deal but that was looking at if I did a commercial conversion yeah so then I looked at doing a residential conversion which would be to convert that into a three bed and a two bathroom um, what I didn't like about that option is it's sandwiched between two buildings. Mm -hmm. And firstly, while the range of prices in that area would have been anything from 850 to three and a half million, which is a lovely range, and you look <laughs> at the mid price, 1.6 GDV, to convert that to residential is not gonna cost a lot because you're not changing like the exterior or extending, you're just really refurbing. Yeah. Um, Did you consider a HMO? Uh, you could do, um, but um, in terms of just for me, I just thought the values there probably be better to get um, a, a house. But um, it, again, I just think that it didn't really stack as much. Um, the reason why the HMO, it's just the, the number of rooms is just not enough to make it mm. viable. So for me, I would have passed on this deal. I wouldn't have done it. I think if you were going to to basically buy it, it would not be anywhere near guide price. Right. I would be looking at buying that for like 900 grand, okay. not anymore. Um, so I would have actually, you know, passed on that deal personally. But if you were to, to buy it to get a 30% profit, then it would need to be in the 900 range. Mm. Okay. So you're, when you'd gone into kind of costs and contingency and that those numbers that you have there are all based on the, if you were going to make it into a kind of single family dwelling. Yeah. Right. Okay. Understood. Yeah. So this wouldn't work for you, but is this the type of deal you'd like to do or would you do something different? Yes. I mean, for me, what I would look at is probably a couple of things, either take a commercial unit and then look to do, do a commercial conversion. So whether that's a flat in the back or look at additional floors. You know, I do love this type of project. I'd say it's perfect for me. Yeah. And one thing I would say is that I would be able to help John find a much better deal than this. But this type of deal um, would be something that I would be able to. Um, and there was no do. income numbers. There was nothing that was supplied there. And I looked online and in the deck, I couldn't see anything. OK. And how did you feel about give, being given this particular project to analyse? So, so first I was like, oh, great, a commercial conversion. And then I was actually a little bit disappointed that there wasn't much development potential because for me, mm. I was like, I wanted to come here and like wow you with like, you know, being able to like add some extra floors or, you know, create like a flat in the back and be clever with like, you know, how to kind of create more 
residential space um, through this, but there so wasn't... Didn't, you didn't feel it was giving it, you, it gave you enough to work with? More that it didn't give me an opportunity to show you my best. Interesting that this is her kind of thing, so she got quite yeah. quickly to, actually this doesn't work and that doesn't work, and... Um, if she's looking in this type of area, then the one million available for the purchase, then mm. the, that type of sum is going to be she, needed, particularly in London, She'll spend right? it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Do join us after the break where we see how the anxious investor, that's Aaron, and Oxford graduate and investment banker Vanessa got on with their deals. First up, we have self-titled the anxious investor Aaron. He's been given an interesting property in Norfolk. It's a former residential care home which has planning permission for an additional building providing 12 bedsits. The property was placed at auction with a guide price of £1.3 million. So let's see how Aaron got on. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you as well. So, how did you feel when you were given this to, to analyse? Oh my God. Um, so firstly, I would not uh, present this to an investor in terms of my numbers this way. Um, but yeah, it was... Um, when, when I first got it, I was slightly overwhelmed that I've never done a care home before. It's not something that I've ever looked mm. at. So mm -hmm. that and a combination of looking at the way John has his appraisal just threw me off ever so slightly. Um, so I was just like... Not just you, not just yeah, you. So which, I, which I was great. Well, I wasn't glad okay. to hear that people struggled, but it, at least it made me mm. feel a little bit reassured. Because yeah. I normally try to work from the end in mind and work backwards. Right. And this kind of looked like you were looking at the front, essentially. So uh, played around with it a little bit, realised there was no... Sorry, I'm speaking and you haven't asked a question. Should I carry on or? Oh yeah, no, carry yeah, on. Yeah, apologies. Keep so, going, um, keep going. My thought process was, okay, I've done a commercial conversion prior to this. Uh -huh. Normally we look at the, the floor plans and see how we can chop it up into flats. Obviously there was nothing that came about on this. So I Googled it, looked at some images. I couldn't see a floor plan from, from the auction lot. So then I thought, as it's got a class two uh, planning permission to build a new dwelling on the side, I figured we must just keep it in its, in its use. It's, it was a former uh, care home, we could potentially just basically reignite it into a care home again. Mm -hmm. Now, it was difficult for me to try and understand how do you value a care home? It's not something that I, I was sure of. I've had one conversation before, and again, this conversation, it was just a conversation, it's not something I'd want to mm. get it in concrete, that they use a multiplier of eight. Um, a Google search has shown me five to seven afterwards. So that was a multiplier that I used. I essentially looked at spare room, open room, uh, right move, um, mm. zoo play, just that looking at what rents are going for for studio properties. Um, I also looked at the local housing association of 113 pounds and 50 pence, and, okay. I, and I kind of went with the, the, the conservative figure of 450 pound a room. Um, I also looked at what care homes make; um, they make anything of up to 13, 1300 a week. But I thought I don't know what the overheads are or anything in relation to that. So I kind of just stuck with 450, um, and then I, I looked at how many dwellings, sorry, how many units we have essentially. Times that by the annual income. So you were looking at just keeping it as a care home and re-renting it? Yeah, and then essentially working at the build cost for um, the side where I think it was an extra 12, was it? An extra 12 bedsit units. And did you pick up that the, that was granted in 2010? I, I did, yeah. So then I went on the planning portal and I know they're, not, they're normally lapsed in, in terms of that, but it, it just obviously said appeal, accepted, and there was nothing else there. So I thought it'd probably be pretty straightforward to get that done again. Again, that was an yeah. assumption on my, on my behalf there, a question that we could ask. And then I, again, I did, I did the build at relatively cheaper than probably flats because I thought they're going to be bed sits. They're not going to be most, most likely standard 37 and a half or 39 meters squared. So I went slightly, I'm not sure if it's too, too cheap on that. So I think eight, 80 pounds is what I went with with that. Uh, worked out what the build cost was, again. Did you try working it through based on the guide price? I ignored the guide price for this example because I thought, that's irrelevant at the end of the day. It's the way I work at it is what is the end GDV minus uh -huh. 30% profit. So I do profit off the GDV normally. Yeah. Minus the 30%. Work out what all the holding costs are, the professional fees, everything that comes into play. Have a 10% contingency or 15%. And then obviously work out the time scales. And then whatever that price is, I never really look at that from being completely honest. Um, and then that's when I was had all my information on the computer and I was trying to put that down onto a piece of paper. And as you've seen, and the letter as well, even the envelope, I think I've jotted numerous things on that. So it is a bit of a mess in terms of yeah. coming to a natural figure, which is disappointing for, for, for myself. But you managed to get to 30% net of GDV. Yeah, so again, not on I, cost though. 
Yeah, it got, yeah. To, it got to the point where I just thought, I need to do this my way. How do I think? So in the sure, last 10 exactly, minutes, exactly. that's what I did. So I thought, what's the NGDV based on the calculations from the rental income, mm -hmm. i.e. an asset that's producing income? Took 30% off. I then realized, obviously, got stamp 4% 4, 4 as well. So then I thought, need to take that off as well, because that's that's obviously in, in that first purchase uh, cost there. And that's essentially how I came to, to that number again. I would really need to look at this uh, in a lot more depth before, obviously, ever offering that. But based on my thought process and what I've just explained to you mm. guys, that's how I stumbled across that number. Was an hour long enough? <sighs> I, I think an hour would be long enough if, if again, this was uh, an office unit, for example, flat. So I could something I could in your it. wheelhouse, yeah, so to and speak. If I didn't get too fixated on looking at the way this was appraising and thinking almost like, you know, when you're at school and you're trying to answer exams and like I needed to answer it this way. If I just had gone away, mm. done it my way, then got those numbers and then essentially plugged them into here. And, and that, that's just, that, I, I take full responsibility for that, but that's just something that I could, I could have just brought on to here afterwards. Mm. And in terms of if you could, you know, kind of go back and do it again, so in terms of getting the floor plan or yeah. what, what kind of things would you do differently? So if this was if this was a project, for example, that I was looking at in an auction, the, mm -hmm. fir the first thing I'd definitely do is, I, like I always do, I always take builders around because that's, that's, they know a lot more than myself. And that's what I did with my previous one. I took three builders around, different times I work out the cost I look at the floor plans I see what we can essentially what I think based on my experience we could chop it into yeah. in terms of what we can convert it um, I'd then take an architect if needs be if there's something that I think are we maximizing the, the maximum use from this potential then I'd speak to local estate agents obviously what what they would value for example the flat flat to be and I could work out the GDV that way if I was to keep it as a care home then obviously it's about approaching people mm -hmm. within that industry something that I've not done but I, I'm confident it's not, it's not it's not going to be rocket science in terms of finding out uh, i'm not sure if they take it on a lease or they require a certain I, I wouldn't know the conditions to that but i would i would essentially find that out okay great well thanks for giving us your review yeah uh, thank, thank you for your very time. much yeah. I appreciate and it. everybody found the found the time you know a challenge yeah, yeah. so yeah. don't worry about that That's at cool. all well, right. yeah thank you so aaron interesting he uh didn't lay his thinking out very well, but he conveyed it verbally, I think, a little bit better. Yeah, than, he'd obviously than... done a lot of work, as he said, on the laptop mm. and kind of fig figured the numbers into there, but wasn't necessarily presented so well. Yeah. But great to get an insight into kind of his thinking, the way he'd look at this stuff. Yeah, I did. I thought I, I made the note that I thought his process was interesting. You know, taking the builders round. Yes. Getting the um, getting them to feed. You know, when he's evaluating something, certainly longer than 15 minute evaluation process. Oxford graduate and investment banker Vanessa is up next. She's been given a four story mixed use building, which is currently arranged as a retail unit on the ground floor and office accommodation above with approval for change of use for the upper floors. The guide price at auction is 700,000 pounds. Join us after the break to find out more about Vanessa's plan for the property. Welcome back. Let's go to Vanessa to find out more about her plans. Hello. Hello, Vanessa. Hi. Welcome. So you have a mixed use building yes. with planning already. So let us know. Talk us through what you, you made of that, uh, what numbers worked for you. Give us some yeah. insight into kind of how you worked stuff out. Sure. So in terms of the mixed use element, because the commercial was rented for a longer period of time and also being city centre, I didn't feel the council would be interested in a new application to try and turn it all to resi. So effectively the commercial, I just left as is. Right. Um, I think I undervalued it now I look back, but I focused on, on the resi above. Um, not having a floor plan, I, I tried to find it on the planning portal but couldn't, but um, the I would like to think about whether the, the car parking space could be extended over. Sorry, did you check up? Mm. There was a planning reference on there. Yes, I put in the planning reference, but when you went to documents, it took you to a weird link that didn't oh, open, okay. unfortunately. And if this was a, a real live mm. deal and that happened, what would you do? Um, I'd probably call up the council or um, go through and, well, I, I, you can either look on 
Google Earth to look at the layout of the building and, and try and work it yeah. out. But in terms or of seeing, sorry. Yeah. Or you could go to the auctioneer and. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 And no, get details good, good of point them. In, in, from the auction perspective. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but I would have looked at whether extending out across the, the parking meant that, did you lose windows? Did you lose the option of balconies? Because all those things you have to weigh up. Mm. Would it be possible in a subsequent application to put another floor on top mm -hmm. under a full planning? Whereas I think that one was permitted development only. So that could have been another option. Um, so looking to extend it and reconfigure out, uh, over and above the 11 units that were currently there. Also, it does look like that the office was given prior approval to change to residential. Y yes, they're, they're the office floors on the first, second, third floor. Oh, okay, it's, not the retail on the first exactly, floor. Exactly, right. yeah. Um, but because of its location, being Devon, Beach Town, mm. it did make me think, could this be an SA block? Mm -hmm. And Mm. put it as service accommodation, have either, either a manager managing it or sell it to a management company. Commercial valuations, I know compared to, I've used bricks and mortar because that felt like the more realistic one to work from. Right. But there is the possibility of a commercial valuation coming in higher. Sure, sure. And what type of yield were you getting on the service accommodation option? I didn't price that up. Okay. I'm afraid. Um, sort of more of a, I, I've, I suppose I worked on the basis of this is what's currently approved. This uh -huh. is the base case to work from. If it was not in auction, could we look at an option and mm. getting the extra planning and, and things like that to, to, to really price that out? But being in auction, I worked on what's the base case we can get. And at 11 units, did you look at the affordable housing threshold? I didn't know. Okay. I'm afraid. Did you try working it through based on the guide? Price um, at seven hundred. I, I try working didn't. through. I used the the um, the landlord tool and sort of effectively just kept changing the price and, until it came out to the thirty percent ROI that was being looked for. But ultimately, where I got to on my bill costs that I felt quite certain of that seven hundred and sort of fifty ish k. Mm -hmm. um, once you've spent that. And I think it's, yes, I've put down 1.57. Okay, maybe it's more like 1.6, 1.7 with the additional commercial value. Mm -hmm. It just felt very tight. So immediately I felt this isn't going to work at 700 based on the current planning. Mm -hmm. If there was an option and, we, and there was more that could be done, um, I've then more room to, to, to play at the 700. But I, in terms of the GDD, I picked up the phone, found a, a similar right move ad and just called the local agent and oh, said, tell, okay. me, to tell me about the area, yeah. one beds, two beds, how does it work, what type of tenant in this area? Mm. And so my GDD calculations for the resi were based on that conversation uh, right. with that local agent. Okay, and how did you value the commercial space? Um, not very scientifically, because I realized I got to the end of it and I'd done it all based on the resi only and forgotten the commercial width. Um, but basically, the commercial conversion we've done previously, the commercial space was about two thirds of the value of a similarly sized resi space. Right. So I very roughly chucked in a number, but forgot that there are three flats on every floor. So it's not actually two thirds. Uh, because what, what did you put for the commercial value? Uh, 70. 70K. Okay, 70K from an income of 18,000. Yes, I didn't work it back from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably closer to 160, 180,000. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So absolutely. Which would have made getting to the towards the 700 much easier. Yeah. Um I think also in terms of the financing element, um I yeah, should have asked the question about are we doing a 75% bridge or something when in as we were discussing that before um, so I threw myself a bit on those numbers so I think I've left quite a lot in their buffer it may be more like a 400k rather than a 300 mm -hmm. but I don't think it works at 700 unless you've got security of additional mm -hmm. further build oh okay yeah that was got... my my feeling yeah, we got John's analysis, and he mm. seemed to be able to make it. it was one okay. of, He got quite close at 700, 33% return. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, I can't see. He had a very um, different GDV, so it was interesting mm. to see kind of how you got to your number there as well. Uh, yeah. yeah, he had so a GDV I'm... of 2.4 million. Oh, wow. Yeah, so from basically for me, oh. from the 11 units, from the discussion 
with the agent and the quick look on right move, it was basically 115 for one beds and 140 for two beds. So that's where I got to the 1.5 for wow. the resi and then added on some extra for the commercial, which I know was wrong, but it, it, it suggests that my resi was under as well. Hmm. Is this the sort of um, deal that you'd want to do with him? Um, in principle, yes. I mean, I'm, I'm very open and, and flexible to, to what he wants to do in different areas. Um, but, but yes, something like this, absolutely. Um, I would just have done more due diligence, more time on understanding the exact layout and how to, to further that. So That's did you feel you had enough time no. to review this? No. No, no, I literally no. was throwing numbers in at the end. I did it all on sort of my spreadsheets online. Yeah. And I just printed out and brought with me. Um, <laughs> but um, yes, in terms of what the bill cost would be and, how, and making sure that I was not underestimating that because from the commercial conversion we've done, that was our main flaw mm. was we completely underestimated the additional cost, particularly around external works, right. which for this one, the outside of the building looked in great yeah. conditions so that was yeah. kind of a reassuring step but um but yes i think that i focused too much on that and too much on trying to make the um funding costs work and then when it came to actually writing things down i was throwing numbers on a page oh, so yeah. no that's it's... okay you weren't the only one that's fine <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, yes you may say so it's two different numbers in different margins as i just sort of kept putting stuff in but no not my okay. finest work so what do you think when john says he can review something like this in 15 minutes <laughs> uh, impressive like it's, and I, that's probably experience experience market knowledge so for me i it, yes i drove through devon to cornwall a few weeks ago but do i know anything about that market that area mm. no so actually the first bit was just understanding how that works what the other properties in the area are like which in most of it was flats above resident oh, sorry um above retail um and what's the type of tenant in that area yes there's the beach it's not as nice as Torquay but it's it's sort of understanding mm. that local area well maybe when you've been doing it 30 years you'll be able to do it in 15 minutes yes <laughs> yes very very impressive I would love to get to that point well, thank you very much Vanessa it's been great to understand how you looked at this thank you thank you well it's been great to see how Vanessa looked at this uh very honest about uh the you know how how you know it was a little difficult for her yeah i i think she struggled struggled a little bit which slightly concerns me given that this is the type of deal th that she wouldn't do she hadn't looked into a number of different things we mm. asked her about but you know we gave them 60 minutes it, it is a really tight time frame so mm. you know completely understand that it's we're not john and his 15 minutes 15 on the back minutes. of the bag yeah. are we so uh, yeah, I think, you know, she, she didn't really value the commercial property side. And then when she did realise, valued it uh, about half as much as John's assessment. Yeah. So yeah, uh, not always easy to do. Missed the car parking spaces. Yeah. Maybe got a little bit overwhelmed, busy, but she did, you know, she called an agent. She's gone and looked at it. Uh, she's done many things well. She has, and actually I liked that she brought in her previous experience. She knows where she kind of, she went wrong on, on her previous experience with the cost. So great mm. that she would be conservative around that. Yeah, difficult to follow the written appraisal numbers though. It's sure. a lot, um, look all over the place a little bit. I like to see it a bit tidy. I feel like a teacher, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's still, She's um, she's got she got the job done. Yeah. On to James, who's worked in various sectors of the property industry, from residential sales to commercial sales and lettings, as well as property and land auctions. He's been given just over two acres of land with planning permission for 24 houses in the Midlands. The land has a guide price of one and a half million pounds. So I'm not sure if the seller of this plot's going to be happy with your £850,000. No, well, I've gone slightly off piece with this one. <laughs> um, we, we're curious to, to hear more about that. I, Take us through it. I just couldn't make it work, even if the land value was zero when I got given it. The bill cost per square foot and the sales price per square foot, it just didn't add up. So the, the local area is selling for £232 a square foot. Uh -huh. We're building about 185 pounds a square foot, and that's turnkey. So that's that's your um, uh, groundworks, landscaping, everything. 
Um, so there was there was just not enough margin to, to be looking at this as a new build development. And, and sorry, was that using your sort of green building style or absolutely, yeah, that's traditional building? Building to, building to passive house standards, um, which is what we do. Even if even plugging the numbers in though with with sort of a standard brick and block construction, which isn't much cheaper than what we're doing, mm -hmm. it, it didn't work. I think I got to, to with a va land value of zero. I think I got six percent profit against GDV. So I've come up with a slightly different strategy, which is what we've done at Springfield Meadows, which is to put in all the, the infrastructure um, and common areas landscaping, all of that, get all of that done and sell this by on a plot by plot basis. OK, that explains because I had a question around how your construction costs were so low, but that's because of this strategy. Right? Yeah, Great. so sorry. The, Say more. I, yeah. I, I, I spent a, a considerable amount of time trying to make it work on the normal development mm, way sure. and it just didn't. So I kind of scribbled my notes on the back, but it really needed explanation. So I'm sorry that, uh, that that was a bit complicated. No, 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 we like that. We like detail. So what I've done is mm. worked out the £232 per square foot, uh, cost per square foot for the sales price per square foot for the local area. I've timed that by the 26,662 square foot of, um, uh, which is what the planning states you get, the gross internal area. Yeah, and that has given me a a GDV of just under six point two million, and then I took forty percent of that mm -hmm. as the land value, which means my GDV is down to two point four seven. And you're comfortable million. with forty percent? You think that's a good? Well, we're we're achieving forty five percent. What that's we're doing in, is that not and in that's Oxford? in Oxfordshire. Um, I think forty percent is is probably still fair. Okay. Um, but Coventry isn't my expertise um, sure. our projects have been in the southeast so um, uh, if I'm completely honest I wouldn't go for this project anyway um, okay and I don't think being at half the guide price would 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 cut it either um, mm. but let me carry on with with my numbers so to make a 30 percent profit of the GDV mm -hmm. that's 742,000 pounds you'd need to make um, cost wise we've got the four percent stamp duty um, I thought the infrastructure and landscaping for the for the um, public open spaces would would total about six hundred thousand pounds. Yeah. Uh, legal fees I put at two and a half thousand pounds per plot. Uh, there's obviously no sill. There's no sill in this area, but when we're not actually building anyway, there would be be no sill. Mm -hmm. Marketing, uh, further design, and further planning I put in at one hundred thousand pounds, and then the finance cost. I put at eighty-five thousand pounds, and then the agents' fees you pay on a finished house. Yes. At thirty-seven thousand pounds. So if you add all of those numbers together to get a a thirty percent return on your GDV, I got to the um, a sales price of eight hundred and fifty thousand, which, as I said, is low, but it just I just couldn't get it to work um, developing the land out. And, and I. Sorry. I was just going to say, and your interest costs are ten percent of the purchase price. Uh, actually, that. Um, I think that was the assumption that we yes, made. Yes. Yeah. That's the ten percent. The challenge. That's what. Yeah, John. Yeah, saying. I mean. Yeah, that's what, have to work yeah that's what I worked out to be. Um, I think it's actually a coincidence that it's eighty-five thousand. I worked out. I think the total costs for this were one point seven million. Um, and then I divided that by, I took a 10% blended rate for that and divided it by two. Okay. And what kind of time frame did you allow in your numbers? Uh, I allowed two years for this. Um, I don't think it would take two years, but I wanted to be conservative. Yeah. Um, I don't know the area, I don't know the appetite for custom build. My guess is with, with the values being quite low, there's, there's possibly not an appetite for this. Um, another reason why I wouldn't take this project and, and be offering on it. Can I just go back to your GDV pound per square foot that you quoted earlier? Yes. Sorry, did you say 225 when that, you were looking at the original scheme? The average cost, the average sales price was 232 yeah. pounds. Because interestingly, John had just looked at it and, and had thought it would be 300 a square foot. Okay. I looked at comparable data on one of the, uh, one of the websites, one of the, deal an uh, one of the analyzing softwares. 
Okay. So given if I'd had a, a little bit more time, I'd have probably um, looked at some more comparables. But when I couldn't get it to add to, to stack up on an initial develop out project, um, I sort of parked that and went off to the custom build to see if I can make that work. Mm. So my comparables are potentially slightly off. I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. I'm, until these last couple of weeks, I haven't really stacked deals up before. I've been more on sales and marketing. So I've had a bit of a crash course over the last few weeks. And I built myself a spreadsheet, but the spreadsheet was based on developing a piece of land and not doing custom builds. So <laughs> to rebuild my spreadsheet. Did you plug the original concept into that though? Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's where I found that if you got given the land um, at, a at a build cost of £185 a square foot, you'd only make 6% um, profit on your GDV. And that's with the land for free. Did you find this a difficult task? Uh, yeah, as I said, I haven't done this very, um, I haven't really done this very much before, but it's been an incredible learning curve for me the last few weeks. Um, and I feel like I'm already getting better at it um, and given some more practice and, and mentoring, I mm. think I could probably be quite good at it. This seems to be quite a dark art and the slightest tweak in numbers can, can change it dramatically. Yeah, that's why it's quite often important to do sensitivity, build in a sensitivity analysis. Okay. Um, as well. So in my in my stack on my computer, I've I've built in a stress test. So if the GDV drops by ten percent, what happens if the mm. build costs increase by ten percent? Uh, and I've got another column for uh, increased build time. So I can plug all that in, and it yeah. works it all out. Great. Great work. Thank you. Thank you. Too. All right. Thanks, thanks James. for your time. Thank you. I really liked his how kind of the honesty and humility that he came mm. with. I like the way he thought outside the box as well. Clearly he's got his his way, you know, mm. he has a specialism that he wants to do and it depends if that fits with John. But I thought it was, I thought it was really excellently done, excellently thought, excellently researched. I, I you know, not an easy task analyzing sort of a slightly more, you know, slightly complex one. Yeah. Uh, I think um, he's, GDV was different. John had made it work in his own analysis. Yeah. He didn't have the same end sale value, which no. flawed the whole model. Yeah. So that's curious and something maybe to talk to John about because, um, you know, John made it work, James didn't make it work. Yeah. Had to change strategy. Join us again next time for the second part of the challenge, where we'll find out how Luigi, Alicia, Alfred, Kimberly and Tej got on. The panel will also decide who they'll put through to the final called The Deal. There's all to play for.